Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Weekly Wise Guys here at 9 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Today, we're going to be talking about walking feet. And uh, I'm here on a Brother mid-range sewing machine. This one happens to sew sideways and do all kinds of fun stuff. But I am uh, going to focus today on walking feet. I'll just slide a piece of fabric under here. Right now, I have a regular foot on and the feed dogs are underneath. The feed dogs are what feeds the fabric through the machine. There are two feed dogs, on either one on either side, and they actually grab the fabric and move along. What a walking foot is, is an additional set of feed dogs on the top. The white piece right here, when I move this up and down, this set of feed dogs moves up and down. So what that does is as the fabric is feeding through the machine, I'm in an odd angle here, it actually grabs both top and bottom, pulls it forward, lets go of the fabric, moves back and pulls forward. So that's the purpose of a walking foot. It's also called an even feed foot. And um, what it does is keeps both the top and bottom layer of fabric feeding through the machine at an even rate. When you're doing things like very long seams, like attaching a border around the outside of a quilt or sewing on your binding, you tend to get some puckers if you use just a regular foot. But by adding that second set of feed dogs on the top, you'll get a much more even seam. So that's the purpose of it. And I'm gonna show you how it goes onto the machine. This is a standard walking foot. Um, this little, what I call the lobster claw, actually hooks over the needle bar. And this is where the screw attaches. So I'm gonna just take a screwdriver and I'm going to take off this foot, not just the foot, but the ankle as well. The ankle is, let me just get it out here. The ankle is this piece, it's what attaches to the machine. If I was just changing my foot, I'd just push this black lever at the back and it would snap back in as I worked with it. Okay, <laughs> so snap back in. Don't do it left-handed, Elaine. It'll snap right back in and then this takes it off. But when you put a walking foot on, you also have to take off the ankle. So I'm gonna set those two pieces aside and I'm gonna go back to my walking foot. Again, for those of you who just hopped on, the walking foot has a second set of feed dogs. These white feed dogs right down here. When this goes up and down, the feed dogs go up and down. To put it on, I lift the claw, I kind of use my thumb, and I come in from the back. The claw has to go over the needle bar, and the screw, they're a little bit awkward. The screw goes in like that. And I'm gonna grab my screwdriver and screw that on straight. And I'm gonna show you a couple different types of walking feet and what they do. Just push the thread out of the way, put my foot down, plant my needle, and I just have a simple straight stitch on right now. And as I stitch, I'm gonna just hit, put my foot down, my needle down, and hit my gas. And you can see those feed dogs kind of go up and down as we go along. I'm gonna cut my thread and take that back out. So this is just a basic walking foot. A walking foot doesn't allow the machine to sew backwards at all. It's always feeding forward. Brother just came out with a product called the Dynamic Walking Foot. And what that walking foot does is it has a couple of features that a regular one doesn't. First off, it's made of metal and it's a much stronger product. Um, second, it has two different feet. These feet just pop off the bottom and there's two different ones. There's an open toe and a closed toe. The closed toe is just the standard walking foot. Um, works for um, cotton fabric, other easy to move fabrics. The open toe is actually made for um, 
uh, with a non-skid bottom, excuse me. So the non-skid bottom slides great along things like vinyl, faux leather, uh, pleather, any synthetic fabrics that are hard to feed through your machine. Um, the walking feet work just great for that, and that non-skid is super when you're using different, heavier fabrics that don't feed so well. There's just two little pegs here and here, and they just snap right into the bottom of the walking foot, just like so. And again, it has what I call the crab claw, and you can see those black feed dogs here. When I move this up and down, they're moving up and down. But the advantage of this walking foot is it has the ability to move backwards. So you can use this on any decorative stitch that's seven millimeters wide or narrower that um, requires moving forward and back. <clears throat> Excuse me, things like a feather stitch. So I'm going to take this off again and I am unscrewing the screw. And I don't have to take it all the way out, just far enough that I can get the foot off. And this one, again, I kind of hold the claw up with my thumb. I come around from the back. I put the claw over the needle bar. And then the screw fits in on the side. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a bit of a hoarse throat this morning. Just <clears throat> must be the early time that I'm not used to. And I'm going to screw this in, and a little tighter here. So it's a little awkward when you first start doing it. <clears throat> Excuse me, it's also awkward when you have a camera between your hands. So now I've got this on. This foot, as I said, does come off and change. I can slide that one out. I can slide this one on. Again, the difference between these two is that this one with the open toe foot, um, your vision is a little bit different, but also this one is non-skid, so works great with those um, synthetic fabrics. So I'm gonna just put my foot down, my needle down, and hit my gas. It's also quite a bit quieter than the other one you'll notice. And now I'm going to switch to a feather stitch. A feather stitch moves forward and back side to side and if you look closely you'll actually see the foot moving forward and backwards the fabric is moving up and down and back and forth as it feeds through that's what a dynamic walking foot does that a regular walking foot doesn't and i'm going to just take this out so you can see what that stitch looks like and it will do just a beautiful stitch when I'm doing quilting with decorative stitches, I started using this foot and just love it. It gives me a much smoother finish, even smoother than my regular walking foot because it has that ability to stitch sideways and back and forth as it feeds through the machine. So that's the dynamic walking foot. The other thing that's neat about walking feet is they come with, um, or have optional quilting guides. There's a hole in the back of the foot and I'm gonna just slide this little bar through there. I should have put it through before I put it on the machine because I can't see what I'm doing. Give me just one second here. Switch to my other one here. There we go. So this is a guide that I can move from side to side. So if I've sewn this stitch right here, this feather stitch, and I wanna do another parallel line, I can choose the width that I want, and now instead of watching my needle, I'm going to watch this as I stitch along, and it will give me parallel lines. The machine is feeding itself, and I can stop and cut. Ooh, got a cut with the foot down. And that gives me parallel lines. So it's a neat way if I want to grid something for quilting, it works super. And that is the dynamic walking foot. Again, it allows the fabric to feed back and forth on decorative stitches 
that require the machine to move forward and back. So it works great, a little bit more, um, quite a bit more stability than a regular walking foot. The other walking foot I'm going to talk about just for a moment is the move it foot. This foot is very large and it goes on the large brother machines. This one actually has a conveyor belt rather than a um, pair of feed dogs. The difference with that is when you're using feed, uh, a walking foot that has feed dogs, the fabric is grabbing and pulling forward. It lets go, pulls forward again. Always letting go just for a minute as it moves along. With the conveyor foot or the move it foot, that conveyor belt never comes off of the fabric, so it keeps it very, very smooth. This also comes with multiple feet. It has an open toe foot that just snaps on. This one has a quarter inch guide as well, the quarter inch quilting guide. The first time I ever used this foot for piecing, which I now do all the time, it's the first time I ever made a quilt and it came out to the exact dimension that it set on the pattern. When you're piecing, that conveyor is putting pressure on the fabric and nothing moves or shifts side to side at all. It keeps it totally stable. And then the other foot that it comes with is the stitch in the ditch foot, which gives you a center line to follow along. If you're wanting to stitch in the ditch, you can use that as a guide to come straight along. I'm not gonna hook this to one of the big machines today, but that's what the Move It Foot does. It also has the um, hole up here to be able to put in the quilting guides as well. So that's the Move It Foot. But this dynamic walking foot is a low shank foot, so it fits on the whole BQ or Brother Quilting Series line of machines, works beautifully for those, gives you that ability to use a walking stitch on stitches that actually move forward and back. So that's how that works. Hope you learned something this morning. The other thing I want to share with you is the just a fun thing. These machines also sew sideways and without the walking foot on, they actually sew big wide stitches. These are about an inch or inch and a half wide. The machine sews sideways, so as you go, the fabric is actually moving side to side. So these are really neat to use on things like quilt sashings. Really a fun option on some of the machines. If you've never seen a machine sew sideways, um, stop in for a demo. They're really fun to do. It also allows you to do decorative stitches like this. Normally, a machine can only do a decorative stitch as wide as the hole in the foot, or it would the needle would hit the foot. These, the machine sews sideways back and forth, so you can get decorative stitches this wide while still using a foot that only has a seven millimeter hole. So it really is a neat thing. The other thing I'm gonna talk about for just a second, I'm gonna get up here and move my camera and get out of my seat here. And I'm going to walk over and just talk about on uh, Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock, we are going to be doing a window shopping and live demo on Quilt As You Go. This is just a simple nine patch, 42-inch um, square topper or wall hanging. It is done Quilt As You Go. So the back wraps to the front and creates a sashing. We're going to be talking about how to do that. That hour demo will probably be about an hour long. And then this is one that looks like our regular table runner, but it is also done quilt as you go. And so it gives you a reversible runner with a real interesting look. So we'll be teaching you how to do quilt as you go in blocks or rectangles using a single sash or a double sash or no sashing. So join us Friday at 3 o'clock here on Facebook Live. Hope you enjoyed this this morning. Thanks for having your morning coffee with us, and we'll see you Friday at 3. Thank you. Bye.